everybody, welcome back to the Bay Bolt channel. The Tampa Bay Lightning are finally back in the win column after dropping three of four, defeating the Carolina Hurricanes four to two tonight. Welcome back to another episode of Quick Strikes. My name is Mike Wax, as always, with my co host Jake Ricker. Jake, a very interesting game. How are you doing tonight? Michael, I'm doing great. Play all night, baby. We're finally back into the win column. It feels good. I say finally, but we only lost two games in a row, so it wasn't even that long. It felt a lot, a lot longer because their games kept getting postponed, though. But you know what? I'm very happy with the way the Lightning played tonight. I thought overall they played a very good game. A couple of unfortunate uh, things, some things to work on as always, but overall very good performance from the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight. Very, very good performance indeed, and some news before the game even started. Yesterday when I was on Cat Friendly, I noticed that Jamel Smith had been sent to the taxi squad. Jake, you and I had had conversation about this prior, and we said it seems like somebody's ready to make their debut, whether they are Alex Barry Boulay or Ross Colton. The former ended up getting the call tonight. Alex Barry Boulay getting his very first NHL game. He's one of your favorite prospects, Jake. He's one of my favorite prospects. Hopefully he wears that number 60 with pride. Absolutely no question about it. And you're right. We knew this was going to be coming soon. John Cooper had said he wanted to get uh, both ABB and Ross Colton, who hopefully will get his first chance very soon. He wanted to get them into the rotation. So we knew this was coming eventually, just didn't know when. But uh, we'll get to this in a little bit. But I thought Alex Beerbele played a fantastic game tonight. He looked really good. He looked like he took that opportunity and, and put his best foot forward. He played a, a great game tonight overall. So very happy to see him get his first opportunity. He's been really good in the minor leagues for so long, and hopefully that can transfer to the NHL. From what I saw from tonight, it looks like he's got a pretty good yeah, shot. Hopefully he does, you know, playing with skilled players like Alex Volkov and a little bit of a grittier player in Patrick Maroon on normal nights tonight. He was actually on the third line because John Cooper did a little bit of line mixing. Uh, it was something that we have not really seen so far this season. And to be straight up front about it, you know, first positive of the game, I loved it. It was one of my three, uh, three ups uh, on my own Twitter account. The fact that Coach Cooper is willing to make adjustments even after only two games of losing uh, is a sign of progress. It, the, he understood that things weren't working from both the forward and the defensive pairing uh, side. So, uh, you know, putting together a new set of lines and we actually have those lines for you uh, here. They were a little bit hard to tell early in the game because there were so many five on four and four on five opportunities uh, for and against the Lightning, but Palat, Point, Coleman, Joseph, Johnson, Stamkos, Gord, Kalorn, Alex, Barry, Boulay, Maroon, Goudreau, and Volkov. And for the most part, I thought that the majority of the forwards played to their new lines very well. They did, and it showed right away very early. I mean, the Lightning came out and played fantastic. They were jumping on pucks. They were grabbing rebounds. Uh, they looked like they were just playing faster. I don't know if that was because John Cooper was yelling at them a little bit, though, and they needed to pick their feet up, whatever it was. But whatever it was, they, they did a great job. They were taking more shots. They did everything that they were supposed to do, they were doing right. I really loved what I saw from this team early. I mean, the Lightning were out shooting the Hurricanes, I believe, at one point, like 11 to 2. Uh, so they were – they were doing something right now. Not all those shots were high quality danger chances, but just the fact that they were taking more shots and being aggressive, being fast showed, uh, which is really good to see. That's what you want from a team like the Lightning. That's their style of game. And, and they played it very well, especially early in that first period. Yeah, and something else that we saw, not only that the lines were changed, all four of them, but who was on that first line? You know, Steven Samkos has been producing uh, it's not like he's been a, a negative on that first line, but he was bumped down to the second line and Blake Coleman was given a promotion. Blake Coleman played, in my opinion, besides Andre Vasilevsky, the best game of any Lightning player tonight. Uh, he was generating scoring chances. He was always in front of James Reimer, whether it was a breakaway, whether it was a rebound. He always found a way to the net. James Reimer, for his credit, was unbelievable, especially against Blake Coleman. Uh, it's, it seemed like Coleman had like six or seven opportunities. None of them, unfortunately, went in. 
but that is a really positive sign for a defensive minded forward to be getting so many opportunities in the offensive zone. I think Coleman knew from that last game that he struggled. He wasn't happy with himself after missing some golden opportunities on, on offensive side of things. And he changed that and that showed he played a really, really good game today. Not only Michael, did he play good offensively? He played fantastic on the penalty kill as well. Uh, you know, that's one of my positives again from this game. Uh, almost everything from this game was a positive, to be honest with you. But Coleman and Goodrow, again, were fantastic on the penalty kill. But, yeah, you're right. Coleman overall was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, it's funny, Michael, we had all of those opportunities early in the first. We looked so good. And it ended up being Carolina, the ones that scored the first goal on just their second shot of the game on a rebound that Vasi wasn't able to corral, which was, I don't know about you, Michael, very, very frustrating as a Lightning fan, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, credit to this team. You know, they went down one nothing in that first period, but they didn't let that get the best of them. They came back in the second, and they played just like they did at the beginning of the first period, and they played excellent in that second period. Yeah, they played excellent. They were able to get goals from Steven Samfos on the power play, no less, which was something that struggled in the first period. Victor Hedman got on the board as well. It was a weird seeing Hedman and Sergachev, but it was something that actually worked out pretty well. We don't normally see Sergachev on his offside, but on that play, it was uh, very reminiscent of, uh, I saw this a lot covering the game, that a lot of people said it was very reminiscent of his goal against the Capitals in the playoffs where he gets a pass from Kucherov at the time and has a wide open cage. This one, he gets a pass from Sergachev off the faceoff, walks in a little bit, same exact kind of shot. So, you know, if it works, it works for Victor Hedman. Uh, with that goal, by the way, we should mention that Victor Hedman uh, passed Brad Richards for fifth all time in Tampa Bay Lightning scoring, which is no small feat considering that Richards played nine seasons with the Lightning and a lot of them were very productive seasons. Richard himself, a Stanley Cup champion. Uh, Hedman right now is at 490 points. So he's been inching ever closer to that 500 point mark. A very good accomplishment for Victor Hedman. Awesome for him. He's been such a solid defender for the Tampa Bay Lightning for so long. He's been one of the best defensemen in the entire NHL for the last couple of years. So uh, great to hear that he got that huge achievement. Hopefully we continue to see him break some more records as a Lightning player. Hopefully he can stay a bolt for life. He's one of the, the best bolts that we've had in so long. So good for him to keep to, to do that. And hopefully we can continue to see that success from Victor Hedman. Absolutely. And Jake, I wanted to ask your opinion about two very specific players. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to allow my, my, my thoughts of them to really cloud your judgment, but I wanted to ask you about Andre Palat and Eric Chernak. Uh, they, they had uh, games. I'll leave it at that. Um, what, what were your opinions of, of the both of them? What did you see out of them? What'd you like? What'd you not like? Yeah, well, Andre Palat definitely had a much quieter game than he's had in the past. Well, Andre Palat's been off to one of his best career starts that we have ever seen from him. So, you know, at the beginning of the game, he wasn't doing too much. He's relatively quiet. But uh, I'm very happy with Andre Palat's game because he ended up getting the game-winning goal for the Lightning in the end of the third period. And that just goes to show you he never gave up, especially on that play. He brought that puck in front of the net, took a couple of whacks at it, got a, got a lucky bounce, and put the puck in the back of the net. So, you know, the fact that Palat didn't get down on himself, didn't get frustrated, didn't give up at any point in that game is very impressive. Listen, you're not going to have perfect games all the time. It's just not the way things go. Players go in droughts. Players have tough times sometimes. But Palat kept fighting and ended up scoring the game-winning goals. So I'm happy the way Palat played. You know, I'm sure he wanted to do overall better from the first two periods. But, you know, I think game through for him in the third period. So I, I can't complain about too much from Palat. But he had an assist as well tonight, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So he he's just been excellent so far this season. He continues to amaze me. He's had, again, one of his best starts to his career. Um, as for Eric Chernak, you know, I think he had a relatively quiet game. He struggled a couple of times. I think he had a turnover once or twice in this game as well. So not his best game, but again, you know, I go back to, and he's been relatively solid, I think, for the Lightning overall. Um, definitely not his best game. I think there's some other defenders, which, you know, I'm sure we'll get to in just a second, that were uh, not as good as Eric Jernak. I've been struggling a little bit more than him. So, uh, you know, 
tough game. It wasn't the greatest for him overall, but luckily the Lightning as as a whole played very well. So, um, you know, I'm happy from what I saw from both those guys overall. Yeah, and the reason I asked it is you sort of nailed it. It wasn't necessarily their best game, but they had some moments of absolute brilliance. The the words that were the word that was coming back to me when I was thinking about both of them was just inconsistency. Like just in this game in particular, they had moments where they looked like the best forward and the best defenseman on the ice for the Lightning, and they had moments where they looked like the worst. Uh, both of them had turnovers. I thought both of them also generated plenty of opportunities. Like Eric Chernak had a wraparound attempt. When's the last time you saw a defenseman try to do that? Andre Palat, like we mentioned, had that goal, the stick lift on Brady Shea, get that lucky bounce, get the go-ahead goal. You know, I'm not going to say it was their worst game of the season. That's not far from it. But it just seemed like there were tale of two halves in the game where they were playing very well and then very poorly. Or in the case of Palat, they were playing very poorly and then ended up getting the game-winning goal and playing very well for the rest of the game. So I think for them, it was really inconsistency. But like you mentioned, it's probably a one-off thing. Like I'm, I'm not upset with them. This is not a thing where like they've been playing bad for a long time and I'm, I'm frustrated, but it was kind of noticeable that they were playing so well and then so poorly. Yeah. And you know, that's going to happen to guys. The key for, for this situation is how do they adjust? You know, again, we kind of saw the pull out already, as I mentioned, right? Bad game to start and then finish really strong. For sure, it was the opposite, but you know, the question is in these next couple of games, does this continue? Are they continuing to be very inconsistent and become a little bit of a problem? Or do they realize like Blake Coleman did in, in this game? He said, wow, I had a bad game last time. Let me come out and play one of my best games I've had all, all season. You know, that's what you got to look for for these guys. And I expect the Lightning to absolutely do that. The Lightning have been so good at making adjustments and fixing their problems as the season goes on. So I fully expect these guys to come out and have fantastic games the next game, even though this wasn't even that bad of a game for them uh, on both counts. Yeah, and I, again, I want to reiterate, I'm not, this is not a, a bashing segment. I'm not trying to like ruin these two guys. It was just a very stark contrast in the way that they played throughout the game, which is sort of why I was surprised with the two of them. Uh, but a couple of players that, you know, I think could be a little bit better, and then we'll finish on a positive like we always do, or at least always try to do. The The right side of the, the defense has got to be better. Uh, you know, Luke Shen, Jan Ruda, they have to be better. Too many out-of-position looks, too many turnovers, it really feels like I have to be yelling and screaming about what Cal Foot has to do to get back in the lineup. And not only Cal Foot, you know, if you are a prospective defenseman prospect on this team or like taxi squad member, what do you have to do to go on here? What is possibly Ben Thomas have to do to get on the team? And I'm not the biggest fan of Ben Thomas. But, you know, what do you have to do to get on this team? You think you're better than Luke Shen and Jan Ruda. What does Andres Borgman have to do to get in the lineup? Because that guy was really solid when he was in Sweden uh, and it has NHL experience. I understand that jo John Cooper loves to stick with his guys like Alex Kalorn, like Tyler Johnson, a couple of guys that have gotten the ire of the Lightning fan base. But this is weird because... These two guys aren't really his guys, and yet the guys that are on the bench aren't getting the opportunity to prove themselves. I would absolutely love to see Cal Foot get a shot back in the lineup. I think he absolutely deserves that chance because he played pretty solid in the games that he has played. And you're right, Luke Sharon and Ruta, you know, haven't had the greatest seasons. But, you know, I think this is a, a matter of, you know, we don't know. I mean, we only see what happens on the ice. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe Luke Shen is a fantastic veteran and a huge leader, especially for those younger guys that come on the ice. And that's something that's very important and cannot be taken for granted. Now, again, I don't know this at all. This could not be the case whatsoever. But, you know, my guess is that John Cooper sees something in these guys that we just don't. We see them more off the ice. That could be the reason. However, though, uh, with that said, I do think that, you know, a couple of the, the guys that you mentioned, especially Cal Foot, should absolutely get the chance to get back there in the lineup so they could just have the experience even and not get too rusty. So hopefully we will see them very soon. Um, but, you know, 
it, it's really hard to say why they, they haven't gotten an opportunity and why Cooper has stuck with them because, you know, we don't see what goes on inside the locker room or at practices even, you know, those, those taxi squad guys do typically practice with the lightning. Maybe there's something that John Cooper's seen. He just doesn't think they're ready. Um, you know, and that's, that's it. So it's hard to say, but hopefully they will get an opportunity to get, to get mixed in there at some point. We can see their on ice performance again as fans, but you know, John Cooper has not steered this team wrong for so long. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta uh, trust the Cooper plan, you know, as the old saying with, with trust, trust the Eisenman plan. So, uh, only time will tell, though. Hopefully, they do get into the mix at some point here in the near future. Not as uh, not as smooth flowing uh, Cooper plan as Yai's plan. No, but... definitely not. But hey, <laughs> we'll come up. With but uh, but it's it's quite all right. And one of the people that I guess was a part of the Yaiser plan, Andre Vasilevsky, will end on him. What a fantastic game from Vasilevsky! I know a lot of people. Probably if they look at my three ups are like, how could you not in include Andre Vasilevsky? He was the Lightning's best player. Well, I wanted to get Blake Coleman in. I wanted to give John Cooper props. Then I wanted to say congrats to ABB. But if we're talking about the best player on the ice, uh, probably not named Blake Coleman, it's Andre Vasilevsky. He was utter uh, utterly fantastic. Made a couple of huge saves on Dougie Hamilton, Nino Nita Ryder, Vincent Trocek. There were a lot of guys that had golden opportunities and Vasilevsky was just dominant. And this is, I think, the the type of guy that the Lightning fans are expecting day in and day out. I know he struggled last game against Carolina, even though the numbers really didn't tell the story. This time, you know, the numbers back up how good he actually was in net uh, with him uh, over 30 saves. Uh, for like, I think like the seventh time already this season. He's been unbelievable. If we ever get the opportunity and the honor of interviewing the one and only Andre Vasilevsky, I want to ask him what his mindset is after a loss and going into these games, because whatever he's doing, I want to apply to my own life. Let me tell you that, because he just seems like he's always locked in, ready to go and play some of his best hockey after losses, you know, despite Carolina's two goals, even on those two goals, Bassey didn't really even have a chance on those. One of them came on the power play where uh, Foss was wide open on the right side. Nothing Bassey could do about that. And then, like you mentioned, made some high quality saves and made some great stops throughout this entire game. So it, it's just something after a loss, Vasilevsky is just absolutely locked in and plays fantastic. We know Bassey to be such a good goaltender uh, for all these years. I mean, even when, you know, in just any game, Bassey's always playing uh, some of his best hockey, it seems like. So he was fantastic, as always. Uh, it's so nice to have such a solid goaltender in that for the Lightning. You know, there were there are a lot of years uh, for the Lightning that where they did not have a solid goaltender. And by the way, if you want to learn about some of the Lightning history, be sure to check out uh, our playlist of our, our, our Lightning history videos. I'll link that up in the top right. I'll look at some other videos down in the description as well so you can check out our other content. But um, Bassey's solid, as always. Very happy with the performance. Uh, he's killing. Hopefully, he can keep it up. Absolutely. And uh, with that, I, I think that's everything uh, from this game. Positive, negative. Jake, unless you have anything to, to else to say. Uh, that just about sums it up. Uh, shout out to Alex Barabalay, as we mentioned, on his great first game. Hopefully, we can see him continue to succeed. I'm very excited, obviously, as I always wore the number 60, and he's wearing it now. So, I hope his success can continue. Uh, he's my new pick for lightning strike. So, hopefully, he can sneak one in the back of the net <laughs> first and help me out there with the, with the competition on, on Twitter. Um, but, you know, very happy. I also love to hear for what you guys think of this game. Let us know in the comments down below who you think played well, who you think didn't have a good game. Uh, any and all thoughts are obviously very appreciated, and we'd love to see what you guys have to say. Yeah, um, you're now choosing Alex Barry Boule for lightning strikes. Matthew Joseph, please get on the board. I need you to start okay. scoring again for my uh, for my lightning strikes picks. But, guys, that's going to do it for us on this edition of Quick Strikes. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. Comment down below what you liked, what you didn't like from the game. We will respond to your comments. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Bay underscore Vault for all your news, notes, and game recaps. Once again, there are links either in the little icon up above or in the description down below to some of our other content. Make sure to check that out as well. For Jake Ricker, my name is Michael Wax. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, the 
Tampa Bay Lightning are the defending Stanley Cup champions. Go Bolts.